What is up fellow summoners? Welcome to the channel today. It's time for another closer look review video. This time we're going to be looking at Iceman who just recently this last week was up for grabs in the basic arena and hopefully you took advantage of that. He's, he's one of the top characters in the game which we'll talk about here uh, during this video but in the second round he only went for 3.6 million points which was incredibly low. So hopefully a lot of you have got your hands on Iceman and if you're looking for a video to explain how to use him, a better understanding of his abilities, kind of breaking down uh, how everything works together, hopefully this will provide just that for you. Per my usual a setup, we're going to do the rank up from 440 to 550, then we'll dive into his abilities on the other side. See you there! So what is it about Iceman that makes people absolutely fall in love with him? Well, it's not necessarily one thing that I can point out to you. It's a collection of really strong attributes overall that make a very strong character. Like if you look at his uh, like his crit attributes here, his crit rating, damage rating, you know, they're kind of middle of the road. They're not bad. Certainly they don't like stick out to you as like, wow, i got to have that. Same thing with the synergy bonuses. You know, crit rating's nice, perfect block, eh. Nothing unique or special there that make you think, okay, I gotta, gotta have him for those reasons. It's really once you start digging into his passive abilities, his debuffs, uh, his awakened ability, how all those things play together, along with the fact that he is triple immune, which we'll talk about in a second, that's when you really start understanding uh, where the value in Iceman comes from. To really have a good understanding of the character, you need to have a good understanding of his three main attributes. Uh, he has a buff called Ice Armor, and then he has two debuffs that he plays on the enemy. One is Cold Snap and one is Frostbite, which they look very similar. The Cold Snap is the one with like the three little stars, kind of looks like it's twinkling, so to speak. Uh, that is Cold Snap. Frostbite just looks like a snowflake, so that's how you tell the difference between the two. And then Ice Armor is the buff. It's the shield that you see when you start the fight. And Ice Armor is probably the most simplistic thing to understand, so we'll start there. When you start the fight, you have Ice Armor up, and it does just what it sounds like it's going to do. Uh, it increases your armor rating, but in addition to that, uh, it will not allow you to take a hit that would do more than 5% of your health in, in one hit. So the best way to illustrate this is with an S3. While there may be several animations in an S3, it's only considered one hit. So for this example, I'm fighting Hyperion here without the Ice Armor. Uh, you can see it kills me completely. With the Ice Armor on though, I take almost uh, almost no damage at all. It's almost so minute that you can't even see what's taking place there. And that's all due to the Ice Armor. Now once that Ice Armor has absorbed that damage for you and kept you alive basically, it will be on a cooldown for 15 seconds and then it will reapply itself. Now if you have Iceman Awakened, um, there are several things that he does when he's awakened, but one of those things on the last line there, it actually reduces that timer from 15 seconds down to 12 seconds. And Ice Armor in itself not only saves you from that, but also if you are, um, if you're, if you get your, if you get stunned yourself, um, Ice Armor is going to remove that stun right away. Again, you'll be on a cooldown, but it gives you kind of one free pass there to get stunned and get out of it, which that kind of plays into what I was saying before. Like it makes him somewhat of a uh, difficult defender. Because if you're not paying attention, you'll parry stun him and then just go right into your five hit combo and forget. And he'll be right there smacking you in the face because the ice armor absorbed that stun. So there are several things there the ice armor does for you. The fact that when he's awakened, it's on a 12 second timer means that even if you're fighting somebody who has got power gain, I'm thinking specifically of uh, somebody like Hyperion and Mordo who can be difficult defenders or difficult people to deal with because of power gain. Sometimes it's actually better to, if you can't get the special baited out, don't worry about it. Just push them right into the S3 with the ice armor up. You'll, you'll wipe out all their bar of power. You'll take almost no damage at all. And probably by the time they get back to another S3, your ice armor is going to be right there and ready to go again. So there are some obvious benefits to the ice armor, but it also helps in being able to more confidently play against a lot of the more difficult characters with power gain. Then the last thing to note about Ice Armor is the S2 specifically interacts with the Ice Armor. If you read it there, uh, basically it converts your Ice Armor into additional damage for the S2, but that is at the sake of shattering it. So uh, if you're trying to end a fight, one of the best ways to do it is with an S2. It's going to do increased damage, but it's also going to remove your Ice Armor. So just realize that if you use the S2 and you don't kill the enemy, 
when you come out of that animation, you're going to be a little bit vulnerable because your ice armor will not be back up for at least 12 seconds if you have him awakened, 15 seconds if you don't have him awakened. Now moving over to the first debuff that you place on the enemy, that is Cold Snap. Uh, Cold Snap does two different things. One, it does damage over time, which that's very easy to understand. Um, and then secondly, while Cold Snap is active on the enemy, they cannot evade. Now one of the great things about Iceman when you have him awakened is that you start the fight automatically with a Cold Snap on the enemy. You can see there for my particular Iceman at level 10, uh, it's 1,782 damage. Uh, over 12 seconds when the fight starts, but important, more importantly is for that 12 seconds at the beginning of the fight, uh, if I'm fighting uh, Spider-Man, if I am fighting uh, Nightcrawler, they cannot evade, so I don't have to worry about any of that. I can play as aggressive as I want in hopes of getting basically to the S1. The reason for that is the S1 reapplies Cold Snap, so if I can use that 12 seconds effectively to build up a bar of power, uh, by the time that Cold Snap were to fall off, if I'm facing somebody who can evade, I can reapply it with the S1, and I can keep doing that over and over and over again, so I don't have to worry about that evasion hitting me in the face. Um, obviously, you do have damage that is happening over time as well, which is very nice. Uh, the higher you get the signature level, the higher that number will be when you start the fight off. And then the third way that you apply a Cold Snap is with the S3. Uh, the S3 applies the Cold Snap, but it also does refresh the Ice Armor. So if for some reason, let's say you just took uh, a direct hit um, from an anime or from a special attack or an S3, you lost your Ice Armor, uh, you, can in your, you can yourself fire off your S3, place a Cold Snap, refresh your Ice Armor, and be ready to go as soon as that animation is done. Now, there are two different debuffs that seem very similar. Like I mentioned before, you've got Cold Snap, and you've got Frostbite. Cold Snap is the one uh, that's got like three little stars uh, next to it, and then Frostbite is the one that's got the snowflake. Frostbite is kind of interesting because in and of itself, it doesn't do necessarily anything. Uh, the way to apply it is there's a 45% chance that every time you crit, that you're gonna place one of these Frostbite charges on the enemy. Um, you'll see a little timer. As soon as it's placed, it'll start counting down. When it expires, it's going to do a tick of passive damage right away. And the nice thing is that throughout the fight, uh, there will probably almost always be a frostbite up. 45% uh, chance to apply on a crit means almost every five hit combo, at, at least every two five hit combos that you do, you're gonna be placing at least one frostbite on the enemy, if not multiple frostbites. So there's just kind of this cycle as you get into the fight where you're applying frostbites and they're kind of falling off at the same rate. So there's always this passive damage that's kind of ticking away. You also can uh, apply two more Frostbite charges when you use the S1. So not only does the S1 reapply Cold Snap for the damage over time, uh, for the uh, removal of evasion, but it also puts two more Frostbite charges on. And then what you can do is if you're really trying to uh, dump a ton of damage onto the enemy, uh, I'll show you an example here with Winter Soldier but you can use your heavy attack. Uh, whenever you land a heavy attack, it automatically consumes all of those frostbite charges, and instead of waiting for the timer to run out for them to do, uh, do their passive damage, it just consumes them all, and all the damage is done all at one single hit, which depending upon how many frost charges you have can be a really, really big number. So if you're trying to get through a fight quickly, uh, you can dump both your heavy attack to dump the frostbite charges, and you can drop an S2 with ice armor up to do really, really big amounts of burst uh, if you're trying to, to dump in a bunch of damage right at the very end of a fight to get through it. The last thing I'll point out here on the ability page is the fact that he is triple immune. I believe he is the only character currently in the game that is triple immune, which means uh, full immunity to both uh, bleeds and poison effects, and then also incinerate effects, which that incinerate effect one didn't used to be such a big deal until Mephisto came out. Then I think a lot of people were really wishing they had Iceman to deal with him in the special event. I will suspect that uh, this new boss rush challenge that's coming out, the final fight, is Mephisto. So I, I don't know if that's a coincidence that we just had Iceman in the basic arena and then basically like a week later we have this challenge that features Mephisto in it. I would suggest that it probably isn't, but again, I hope you were able to get your hands on him. I think the bigger picture though is yes, he's great for Mephisto, but because he has all of those immunities, he, he's got a ton of utility. You can take him on any path in AQ, regardless of what map you are running. Uh, he can go down the poison paths, he can go down the bleed paths, 
Um, if for some reason down the road in AQ we see maybe Mephisto as a final boss, which I could see that happening, he's going to be really good for that as well. He makes a very good flex character. If you've got, let's say, you know, you want to bring in somebody with regen, you want to bring in somebody with really good damage output, you can do that. And then he's a really good third spot to fill in because of all of that. Especially if you're somebody who's more of a flex position. Let's say you're not running map six yet. Um, you're kind of used as a flex in Alliance War uh, or for map five. You don't really know what paths you're going to take. You just kind of back up to see how people do. You know, he's he's a good character to have because you can take him down the, uh, like I said, the bleed path, poison path. He's good for any single fight that you run into. When you couple that along with the fact that he's got ice, uh, ice armor up for any mistakes that you make, you know, he's just an excellent, excellent overall character for AQ, which kind of spills over then into special events. He's good for special events. Uh, also good in uh, in story quest if you're going through act number five very very strong candidate for getting you through a lot of that uh, a lot of that stuff as well as i've said many times before i am a big big fan of Iceman. i think easily he's probably top five character on anybody's list i would argue maybe even higher than that maybe top one or two really just depends upon what the situation calls for but because of all of those unique abilities that we've talked about he can be used just about in any phase of the game. He's a character that I would 1,000% use a Mutant Awakening Stone on. Depending upon my situation and my roster, I might even consider using a generic on him as well. I think he's that strong. Even as we see more 5-star star char uh, five star characters come to the game, as we see introduction of 6-star characters into the game, I still would not hesitate as a 4-star taking him up to 550. I think he's somebody that you'll go to a lot for the next many, many months into the game. So if you're kind of debating on what to do, I wouldn't hesitate taking him up to 550. One of the best characters in the game. You won't regret it. If you still have questions regarding Iceman, if I didn't cover something that you got a question about, uh, you can contact me either in the comments section below or probably one of the best ways is to join my Discord server, which the link is in the description. Uh, you can ask me questions there. I'll respond to them. Or you can hit me up on my Twitter. My link to that is in the description as well. As always, guys, I appreciate the support of the channel. Hope this video has helped you out. Until I see you all in the next one, have a great day.